Are you looking to add a bit of oomph to your Thunderbolt 3 enabled Mac? Well, then maybe you should get an eGPU. Other than spending thousands and thousands of dollars to buy an actual new computer, eGPU is probably the most cost effective way to get as much uh, performance or life out of your existing Thunderbolt 3 computer. Now we've been using two different eGPUs for our videos over the last year, and we definitely know the difference between the two. And the two that we have are the Sonic eGFX Breakaway Box 650 and the Razer Core X. Now in short, overall, the Razer Core X comes out on top in terms of pure performance. When it comes to gaming, both were definitely better than the stock GPU and the MacBook Pro, but there was no measurable difference between the two from my perspective. When it came to editing, we had way more success with the Razer Core X. But outside of video editing and you know gaming, there were two things that actually made me like the Sonnet unit a little better. And we'll buy reviews a mighty nigh, this puppy, based all our reviews on actual usage. So for this video, to make sure that we were able to get the most consistent results, we bought two eGPUs, and to keep it really simple, we went and bought the same graphics card for both, an eight gigabyte Radeon RX Vega 56. Now, halfway through our official testing, we swapped the cards between the boxes and ran the same test, just to kind of eliminate the differences, the potential differences in the cards, even though they are of the same make and model. Now, everything I'm about to show you was done on a MacBook Pro from 2017 that came with a base 4 gigabyte Radeon Pro 560. Now, I'm not gonna go and regurgitate the specs for each device. If you want to know that, I don't know, just go watch a CNET video. Now, from a technical perspective, these are the only things that were notably different between these two products. First was sound. The Razer Core X is louder than the EGFX breakaway box uh, when the box is idling and under loads. Now, when both units are in the loads, the sound difference is smaller, but the Core X is still louder by about two to five decibels. Now, with that in mind, the Sonic box actually does sound louder because the differences between idle and load is over 10 decibels in terms of difference. So it is very noticeable when it spools up. When it comes to portability, the eGFX box is easier to move around because it only weighs seven pounds, whereas the Razer Core X is 12. The enclosure on the Razer Core X is heavy. The extra length and extra weight gets kind of annoying to move around. So if you're treating the Core X as a desktop and keeping it in one place, then this won't be an issue. For me personally, I've been lugging the breakaway box between my home and my office. And because it's lighter and it's smaller, it's a good size. It's a good product for that. Another downside for the Core X when it comes to portability is the sled where the GPU actually sits in. As it slides around a bit, so when you move it around, it feels like it's almost going to fall out. But that's actually a good thing when you are planning on swapping your cards. So if you are constantly card swapping, then the Razer product's definitely better as you're not dealing with the peeling and prying like you would with the Sonnet box. Like that is such an annoying thing for me to kind of like have to peel and slot things together. It's just very reminiscent of the gaming boxes I made for myself in the early 2000s. When it comes to capacity, both boxes fit my RX Vega uh, 56s without any issue. However, if you are going balls out on a GPU and you plan on getting one of those three for cards that are three cards thick, then the Core X is only gonna be your only choice because the breakaway box only fits a card that's two slots thick. All right, so that's kind of the boring stuff out of the way. Let's talk about how well these units perform when it comes to gaming graphics as well as video editing. Now I ran the test from Unigen Valley and captured the FPS for each pass. Now during this test, I didn't notice much of a difference between the two eGPUs. Both were definitely better than the stock MacBook Pro, but neither offered much difference between each other or noticeable difference between the two. Sometimes the frame rates were not exactly the same, but again, in the ballpark of one another. Now the only numerical benchmark that I could run on my Mac that would test the GPUs uh, or provide me with a numerical value for the GPUs was Luxmark. Mark, whose scores didn't actually provide much in insight after I ran all the all the tests. Both devices had scores around the 26 600,000 mark, whereas in the stock GPU clocked in around 5,000. So based on that benchmark, yeah, the stock GPU is really bad. Now it was actually at this very moment that I thought there wouldn't be much difference uh, between the units in terms of performance, but I was actually wrong because when I started doing editing with them, the Razer Core X performed in the most consistent manner before and after the card swaps. When adding a 50s TV filter on a four gigabyte 4K video clip, that took between eight and nine and a half minutes. Whereas in the sauna, it took between eight and three quarters minute to 13 minutes. So quite a bit longer. So the range for the sauna was actually much larger. Now one of the things I did notice with the Sonnet that all the times were actually slower after the card swap and I have no idea why. Now as a side note, doing that same render with the stock GPU took over 15 minutes. So if you are a video editor working with render heavy environments, you're going to save close to 50% of your time, which is 
pretty handy in the world of video editing. Uh, I will have to note that the eGPU has no effect on video exports or imports, which kind of makes sense. I will note that the thumbnail generation using the eGPU is noticeably quicker, so if you've got a large screen and you end up scrolling a lot from side to side, the eGPU is definitely going to improve your video editing quality of life. Now, if this eGPU comparison has been useful for you, consider getting your eGPU enclosure through my Amazon link. This is not sponsored by anybody, so yeah, that's like about $3,000 worth of hardware that I just bought. I'm using. But it's not sponsored, so I can say whatever I want. And when it comes to games, I only did two tests, but they were good tests. One was with a little known game called StarCraft II, and the other one was a newer game called Subnautica. Now I chose these games because I'm actually in the process of replaying them because, well, current games blow. Now when it comes to StarCraft II with this graphic setting put on Ultra, every card, including the stock card, was able to produce FPS between 18 and 22 without any issue. Now is this kind of surprising? Not really, since this is a nine-year-old game. And so the stock card in my MacBook Pro would have been amazing nine years ago if it existed. But it was just a neat test to see, you know, kind of what would happen. Now Subnautica was a completely different story. For the base GPU, that game was incredibly hard to do anything at at seven frames per second. Yeah, well, understandably so. Uh, both eGPUs put up numbers between 18 to 22 frames per second. So is that stellar on maximum resolution and stuff on my monitor? No, but that's kind of not the point in this video. Again, the Razer Core is better at video editing as the results were way more consistent. Both are fine when it comes to gaming. So you have to decide, am I getting this eGPU for work, video work, or am I getting it for pleasure? If it's pleasure, it doesn't matter which one you get, really. Other than the price, the Razer Core X is much cheaper. And and if you do plan on doing stuff other than pleasure with it, then, you know, that's the better choice. So that's all I got for this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down there in the comments section below. I may uh, test more eGPUs in the future, near future, just to see what the difference is or if there are any, any ones that are better. Uh, that's kind of all I got. First time watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, produce content once a week, maybe twice a week, depending on how I'm feeling and what we're getting, what we're planning on doing. And uh, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. Okay, Montgomery, you ready? You ready? High five. Good boy. Bye. I'm gonna have to wear this backwards because the light does not reflect the fact that that's there. I don't think, is that even on straight? I feel like a hooligan.